Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the False Prophets playlist and is entitled episode number four. Before we begin, a short prayer. All blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I pray to Almighty God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so I am empowered to speak truth without error, and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God, any errors are my own. I also pray that you, the viewer and listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that any truth I speak, or any scripture that I interpret correctly, is welcomed in your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now let us begin the discussion. We're looking again at Reverend Brandon Robertson from Metanoia Explorations in Progressive Christianity. His YouTube channel, as you can see, has 1.73 thousand subscribers, or at least it did at this point. And we're going to check out a snippet from this video that he did at a East Lake Community Church on February 25th, 2018. So let's see what Reverend Brandon Robertson has to say. Now I'm sure that most of us in this room are pretty familiar with the creation myth at the beginning of the Hebrew Bible. In it we're told great truth, what we'll call God, was creating the universe by the power of words. We're told that God creates human beings in God's own image and likeness, which in the Hebrew consciousness meant that humans had similar desires and similar propensities to God. We were many gods, if you will. We are created to embrace and to create and to be a part of creation. This is how God created us, we're told. And then we go into that saga about the first humans, the Adam and Eve. And in that story, we're told that God creates humans in God's own image, the God who desires truth and the God who is truth. So it makes sense that humans would really love to comprehend the truth so that we would be like God. God gives humans freedom to learn and to explore and examine in the garden called Eden. But in almost a kind of cruel fashion, God creates a prohibition. You can eat and examine every tree in the garden except that one in the middle. That's the tree of knowledge, God says. Don't eat of that or you'll, you will surely die. Do you see the setup here? Humans are made in God's image. Humans desire to know the truth and to pursue knowledge. And that's the one thing God in Genesis says humans cannot pursue. They cannot eat of that tree of knowledge. So what do you expect would happen? Of course, the serpent appears and asks a question about truth. Did God really say? And the serpent expands the prohibition. He says, did God really say that you may not eat of any of the trees in the garden? To which Eve replies, of course, we can eat from all of the trees except for that one, that one about the knowledge of good and evil. And then the serpent speaks a word of truth. No, 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 he says. God just doesn't want you to eat of that tree because if you do, you will gain knowledge. You'll be like God. You won't actually die. So they eat the fruit. Their eyes are opened. Their minds are expanded. And it's a really strange story if you think about it because no matter how you look at this, you've got some really interesting actions coming from the God figure and the Satan figure. I think we often try to gloss over these stories and keep our Sunday school versions, but that's not what the text says. Here we have God actually kind of lying, if not, at least not being clear with God's own words. Because the truth is that Adam and Eve don't die after they eat of the fruit of the tree. In fact, the serpent tells the truth. Their eyes are opened. Their knowledge does in fact expand and they don't die immediately. Wow, what would you have done if you were at East Lake Community Church on February 25th, 2018, and you heard that blasphemy and heresy from this man calling himself a reverend? Well, I would have got up, called him an agent of Satan, left, and asked anyone there who loved Lord Jesus Christ and loved truth to follow me. St. Nicholas would have gotten up, walked up to stage, and smacked Reverend Brandon Robertson right in the mouth, most likely. Think of what he just said at the end, that the liar from the beginning was God. What does Lord Jesus say about this? 
John chapter 8, verse 44, ye of, are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Why? He killed their living spirits, and he led to the fact that their bodies did die later, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. No truth in him is what Lord Jesus states. And Reverend Brandon Robertson states that the serpent spoke the truth from the beginning. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it, the liar from the beginning. According to Reverend Brandon Robertson, the liar from the beginning was the one true God. Wow. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now, he didn't die right then, so God was the liar, really. So is that what that means biblically? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Hmm. So their spirits die. Their bodies physically dater, uh, later die. Um, and they became as gods? Well, is becoming as gods knowing you're naked and sewing fig leaves together as aprons because you're ashamed? Hmm. Satan lied on every single level. There is no truth in him. And again, Notice what the video is entitled, Truth. How wicked and how spiritually blind can you be? Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Notice what happened in verse 7. What happened in verse 6, right? They sinned, the first sin. Verse 7, they recognized their sin, tried to cover their own sin. And notice what happened in verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Who's the voice of the Lord? That's the word of the Lord. Who's the word of the Lord? That's the pre-incarnate son. Oh, so the pre-incarnate son appeared first in the very verse subsequent to what Satan tried to accomplish. And the Lord called unto Abe, Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Notice he blames Eve. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Does she seem happy with the knowledge she's gained? No, she knows the serpent lied to her. She gained no knowledge other than shame. That's not becoming as God. The serpent lied. Lord God is truth, cannot lie. Now, let's look at these words here. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. You shall die, tamut, as you can see, derived from Hebrew Strong's 4191. Tamut, 33 occurrences in the Hebrew Bible, the first there in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Tamut is used again. 
Let's read it. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the son, soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So this idea that, no, if it means, it means right now, you die right now. Otherwise, God's a liar. No, it doesn't. It means you will die at some point in the future. That's what it means. And this wicked, blind man who calls himself a reverend, who claims to be a follower of, of Lord Jesus Christ, this is how he interprets it, bringing shame upon God and actually bringing shame upon himself. And any who would listen to this and agree with his wickedness and foolishness. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Lord Jesus Christ is truth and the voice of the Lord God walking was Lord Jesus Christ. This man claims all that was a lie, that God the Father was a liar, Lord Jesus was a liar, and at the beginning, who was telling the truth? The serpent. This is of Satan. John chapter 8, verse 44, yet again, Ye of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Again, look to the right, the... No, title of this lecture by Reverend Brandon Robertson. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So who is the God with a small g, it appears, of Reverend Brandon Robertson? Surely doesn't appear to be the one true God, does it? Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now let's get into this idea that Genesis is a creation myth. A myth is something that is false. Now here's the problem with that. Lord Jesus Christ speaks of it. He speaks of it right there. So was Lord Jesus lying or did Lord Jesus didn't know? Either way, you deny the New Testament, you de deny the one true God, you deny Lord Jesus Christ because you're calling him either a liar or you're saying, well, he didn't know. Well, then how could he be what he claimed to be and what he was? The divine son, that person of the family of God who took on flesh. And God is omnipotent and om omniscient as well as omnipresent. And Lord Jesus Christ stated in Matthew 24, 21, He's referring to the beginning of the world. What's that a reference to? Genesis chapter 1, which Reverend Brandon Robertson claims is a, a myth. Myths are false. Mark chapter 13, verse 19. Again, Lord Jesus speaking. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Again, a reference to Genesis chapter 1, because it happened. It's not a myth. Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. This is a reference to Genesis chapter 2. And he answered and said unto them, again, Lord Jesus speaking, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made the male and female? Again, at the beginning, reference to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, right? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherever they are no more twain but one flesh, what therefore God hath joined asunder, let not man put asunder. Again, a reference to the events of Genesis chapter 2. These happened. And again, a description of what marriage is. Marriage is between one adult male man and one adult female woman. One husband, one wife. I wonder what Brendan Robertson thinks of what marriage is. That'll have to be left for a future video, Lord willing. Mark chapter 10, verses 6 through 9, Lord Jesus speaks it again in this gospel account. But from the beginning of the creation, God made the male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Matthew chapter 23, verse 35 that upon you shall come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. That's from Genesis chapter 4. This isn't a myth. Abel was the son of Adam and Eve. Lord Jesus is stating that Abel lived. Abel had righteous blood that was shed. That's in Genesis chapter 4. No myth. Because otherwise Lord Jesus is lying or he didn't know. And if that's the case, 
the New Testament is false? And why would you be irreverent following the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ? Notice how none of it makes sense. You can't follow Lord Jesus and not believe the Old Testament word for word. Unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. John chapter 17, verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Again, a reference to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. But notice what this also teaches us. It teaches us that the Father and Son are different persons, but that they're both the one God. They loved each other. Love is loving more than one person. And they loved each other before creation. Before creation, there was nothing that was created. Before creation, all that existed was the one uncreated being. Well, this proves that there's more than one person in that one uncreated being because there was one person, the Father, and a separate person, the Son, loving each other. You love separate persons. A beautiful verse to remember. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, like Reverend Brandon Robertson and any who follow his wicked, false, ridiculous teachings of him, shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. I don't care if the world is ashamed of me. And you shouldn't either. We should only care if Lord God is ashamed of us. We are not ashamed of him. We stand up for him in what he teaches, which is the complete opposite of what this, forgive me, fool wicked, satanic fool to the right teaches. You heard it yourself. John chapter 14, verse 15, if ye love me and we love him, keep my commandments. First John chapter five, verse three, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. See, love is eternal, family is eternal. Okay, and notice how certain people, like Reverend Brandon Roberts, I'm not getting into it with this video, try to corrupt love and try to corrupt family. These things are of the nature of God. It's not your opinion, it's not my opinion, and it's not Reverend Brandon Robertson's opinion either. First John chapter 4 verse 6, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. See, God is love. Love is eternal. Well, love is not just loving yourself. That's not love. It's loving another person and willing to do anything for that person. Again, proving the multiple person, multiple, multi, forgive me, personal nature of God. God has to be more than one person, but it's only one being. Again, that's what again proves logically the you know the Trinity, although we're not speaking of the person of the Holy Spirit right now. John chapter one, verse twelve to thirteen. But as many as received him, received Lord Jesus Christ to him. To them, forgive me, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So this is how we become adopted sons of God and join that family, that perfect eternal family of love. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, so we're adopted sons of God, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated. That doesn't mean God chose this. God predestinated that those of us who choose to see and believe upon the Son will become adopted sons of God by Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God who took on flesh to reconcile us to the family of God. John chapter 6, verse 40. Here's the definition of what the will of God, the will of the Father is. And this is the will of him that sent me, the will of the Father, the will of God, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day, at the great white throne judgment, at the judgment of the sheep and of the goats, when we who believe upon the Son and see him, see his true self, because the Son is truth. And again, look at the, the irony of the uh, title of the video to the right. We'll be raised to eternal life with Almighty God, with the Lamb, and with all the other children of God. At that point, we'll be not just adopted sons of God, we'll be married to the Lamb. And we will live in the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. That's what being raised up is in this particular verse. John chapter 20, verse 28. So what do we need to see and believe? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Kyriosmu, or Kyriosmu, the Lord of me, ke o theosmu, and the God of me. That's what you need to see and believe. Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and is your God. 
He's mine, he's yours, and he's Reverend Brandon Robertson's. But Reverend Brandon Robertson, what does he have to say about the subject? We pray he repents. Revelation chapter 7, verse 15 to 17, Therefore are they before the throne of God. These are us subsequent to the rapture event, when we'll be living perfected spirits with glorified physical, forgive me, glorified spiritual, immortal, incorruptible flesh and bone bodies similar to what Lord Jesus has right now and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more neither thirst any more neither shall the sun excuse me light on them nor any heat for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes this is what awaits us Revelation chapter 19 here's the marriage Verses 7 and 8, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her the wife was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So the wife is the saints. Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 through 4, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. This is when we are with God in the new heaven, new earth, with the descent of new Jerusalem coming, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Again, this happened. It's not a myth. And death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So, similar to Solomon being the son of David who failed, Adam was the, what? Son of God who failed. Lord Jesus can't fail. He's the son of God who can't fail. He's the son of man, the seed of the woman, the seed of Abraham, and the son and Adonai of David who cannot fail. Not like Adam, not like Solomon. Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For through the offense of one, Adam, many be dead. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Notice all these references to the accounts of Genesis, chapters 1 through 3 at least, not being a myth. It's so wicked what that man stated, wasn't it? But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we get our righteousness, the righteousness of saints, right? That's how we're clothed eventually by Lord Jesus Christ, not by our own works, obviously, and by the Holy Spirit, of course. Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Again, look at all these references to the events of Genesis 1 through 3. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I guess Reverend Brandon Robertson understands it's more than St. Paul. No, I don't think so. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. See, Lord God is perfect judgment, but perfect mercy and love. And as you can see, his perfect mercy and love is greater than his perfect judgment. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20 to 22. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So 
false prophets, it's not only that they can't predict things in the future, what? Complete misrepresentation of what the Bible teaches? This man to the right is a false prophet, obviously. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You know, Reverend Brandon Robertson seems like such a sweet man. But the Bible teaches inwardly he's a ravening wolf because he's obviously a false prophet. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12 to 15, But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, Reverend Brandon Robertson, deceitful workers, Reverend Brandon Robertson, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. He claims to be a preacher of Lord Jesus Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of life. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, such as Reverend Brandon Robertson, it sadly appears, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Is his work spreading the true gospel, or is his work spreading a false gospel, which, as St. Paul teaches, is no gospel at all? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Hmm, sound doctrine, not even believing the words of Genesis chapter 1. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, anyone who's always okay with this individual here to the right and believes he's a preacher of Lord Jesus Christ, has itching ears and does not want to follow the true God, wants to basically, instead of looking at God and saying, how can I change myself to be in his image, changing God to fit to your image, creating a false God that makes you feel good about yourself. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Happen then, happening now. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. <laughs> damnable heresies. Oh, hey, yes, Satan was the one who uh, told the truth at the beginning. God was the liar from the beginning. Pretty a damnable heresy, don't you think? Even denying the Lord that bought them. Denying that Lord Jesus Christ is truth. Lord Jesus Christ affirmed all of that, which... Uh, Reverend Brandon Robertson mocks in such a sweet fashion, though, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3-6, through 6, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Reverend Brandon Robertson scoffer? Yes, walking after his own lusts? Probably. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, reaffirming the Genesis account, which Reverend Brandon Robertson tells us is a myth, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And I'm sure he believes that's a myth too, doesn't he? Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Now let's look how satanic it is to misquote Scripture. Okay? Uh, verses, verse 1 and then 5 through 7. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So notice who's going to be tempted, Lord Jesus, by the devil. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God. Notice the satanic spirit doubting who he is. Remember, the demons, when they would see Lord Jesus, didn't doubt who he was. They, they told him who he was. They knew who he was. They just didn't want him to send him into the bottomless pit until their time. Satan, now, on the contrary, doubts him. Cast thyself down, for it is written, pay attention, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, what does that prove? In verse 1, who was being tempted of Satan? Lord Jesus. What did Lord Jesus respond? How did Lord Jesus respond? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Proving what? That Jesus is the Lord thy God of Satan and of everything else. But pay attention to what Satan quoted. He quoted from Psalm 91. Here's the problem. Psalm 91, verses 11 through 13. Satan only quoted verses 11 to 12 and did not Quote, verse 13, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They should bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Hmm. But then was verse 13 that Satan didn't quote. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. And obviously the dragon 
The adder is Satan. And by the way, the lion, the young lion, also is Satan. Uh, recognize that Satan, again, loves mocking God. And just like Lord Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, Satan presents himself, right, in an epistle of St. Peter as what? The lion who devours, right? So this man obviously is a false prophet. He satanically quotes what he wants in Scripture. And notice, just like Satan in Matthew chapter 4, he holds things back. Notice he calls it the tree of knowledge. It wasn't the tree of knowledge. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We pray he repents. I pray I spoke truth and interpret Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the viewer and listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate if you could like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, Lord willing. We shall meet again. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us all. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.